What is up everyone and welcome to what could be the final Pokemon remake hype video, at least for this first batch of trailers. And today we're going to be diving back into Pokemon Legends Arceus, and more specifically how the combat could work in these games. And when I say how it could work, I mean both how I think the combat will actually be in the game, and also what could have been in this action RPG. So let's start there, because according to Pokemon Presents, this new Sinnoh pre-make is being labeled an action RPG. As in, a role-playing game like Pokemon has always been, but with more high-intensity action game elements. Now, I want you all to picture the first game that comes to mind when I say the words action RPG. Personally, I immediately think of Kingdom Hearts, maybe the new God of War, Monster Hunter, heck, even Breath of the Wild, which this game is clearly taking a bit of inspiration from. Now, what do all those games have in common? Well, maybe they have a few similarities, but mainly they all have real-time combat, and that's got me wondering, where exactly is the action in turn-based battles? You got your four moves, you choose which one you want, and the Pokemon patiently wait until it's their turn to attack. I'll give them some credit though, as it seems the Pokemon themselves are finally a bit more animated, with Gallade sorta of flexing its hand blades and Garchomp saying, Come at me, bruh. But this is something that has been in the core series games since they first went 3D. It just doesn't happen very often, it seems. I also got pretty excited to see the Pokemon actually run up to attack the enemy, as opposed to just jumping in place and striking them with the power of a PNG. Now, I don't really mind the battles being turn-based since that's what we've been used to in Pokemon from the beginning, but I feel like this game was a golden opportunity to try out something different, something more real-time and action-y as the genre claims to be. But we'll talk more about that later in the video. First, I gotta bring up another big new feature confirmed in Legends that could carry some of that action we've been craving. It's time to talk about... Dark Souls memes aside, it looks like this feature will play a key role in delivering the action to this game, but I wonder exactly how it will be implemented. According to translations of these confirmed leaks, you'll actually have to roll out of the way of enemy Pokemon attacks. This sounds like a cool concept if it means dodging to avoid getting into battles. For example, a wild Rhydon spots the player walking by and tries to throw a rock at them, which you can either roll out of the way of to avoid starting a battle, or you get hit by it and then... Yeah, that sounds pretty brutal, but... Say you somehow survive and the boulder hitting you is how wild Pokemon can initiate a battle. On the official Pokemon Legends website, it states, players can start a battle by throwing their partner's Pokeball near an enemy, but it doesn't say if wild Pokemon can start a battle with you. So imagining the player dodging out of the way of flamethrowers and blizzards from tougher enemies to avoid a deadly encounter sounds pretty epic. But there's another less likely way dodging could be implemented, and that's in the battles themselves. I mean, Dawn is standing right there inches away from Garchomp, so just imagine what would happen if that dude used Earthquake. Ah! Granted, there's no rolling out of an Earthquake, but it might be interesting having to dodge other ranged attacks that could potentially harm the player. Thinking about it, this does sound kind of tedious though. Like, imagine needing to roll every time Rhyhorn decides to use Rock Slide. It would get annoying real quick. Plus, I'm not sure how they could make it work control-wise, like choosing your moves and moving your character with the same analog, or the roll button being the same as the button for selecting an attack, so the chances of rolling mid-battle aren't very likely, and I think dodging will probably just be an overworld thing. Speaking of the overworld, did you notice the scenery in the battle background is the same as when you're walking around? The battle scene isn't some weird pocket dimension made up of blurred versions of whatever landmarks happen to be nearby, and instead the battles actually happen wherever you start them. Going back to the website, it mentions how battles now start seamlessly when you toss a partner's Pokeball near the enemy. I'm a little sad they didn't actually show this in the trailer, but I'm assuming it's because the transition to the battle isn't finalized yet. I can't wait to actually see this happening in-game. That's about all we know so far when it comes to combat in Legends Arceus, 
And you might have noticed so far that I've only described how battling wild Pokemon works, since in the entirety of the trailer there isn't a single other trainer in sight. This has actually got me a little worried that the game will literally just be running around these empty fields, filling up the Sinnoh decks with no other side quests or challenges to complete. But it's just a small worry right now, since there's over a year left until the game comes out, and at least in the storybook intro, they did show other people walking around the village. So I really hope they add NPCs and enemy trainers, because there's no way we're the only ones using Pokemon for battles when, like, this is still a Pokemon game, right? There's gotta be battles against other people, not just wild Pokemon. So while editing this video, I noticed on the Legends website, it specifically says this story unfolds in an era before ideas such as being a Pokemon trainer or having a Pokemon League even existed, which means the entirety of this game is gonna revolve around just catching Pokemon and filling the Sinnoh decks. Like even Let's Go had trainer battles. Why Game Freak? But at least they got the memes though, them Pokeballs built different! Now I'm definitely getting into speculation territory here, but imagine there's a village for every Pokemon type like in Conquest, but you get to choose which ones you want to recruit with a total of 8 to create your own custom region. Doesn't look like this game is gonna have online features, but like it'd be so sick if your friends could then come try to take on your region with whatever 8 gyms and Elite 4 you chose, and finally take you on as the champion. I mean, that sounds like it could be a whole different Pokemon game on its own. Who knows, maybe 20 more years down the line, you get Pokemon Maker. Since we're going into the realm of speculation, I wanted to wrap up this video by talking about what could have been in terms of action gameplay. I can't be the only one that feels this game could have been the perfect opportunity for Pokemon to try something completely different and give us real-time action-based Pokemon battles. There's a game I played a long time ago called Pokemon Generations that doesn't look all that great, but like it's a fan game so we can cut it some slack. The point is they have a pretty interesting battle system where once you toss your Pokeball out, you actually control your Pokemon, allowing you to move around the battlefield to dodge the enemy's attacks and aim your own attacks. That's just one way you can implement real-time battles, of course. There was Pokémon Tournament in the style of a fighting game, and I'm just really curious what Game Freak themselves could have come up with. Or since they're hiring different companies like Ilka at this point, they could have totally gotten someone else to develop a spin-off or just work on a completely new battle system for the Legends games. Because open world is one thing, but if they really want to move forward and evolve the series, I feel that for calling this an action RPG, turn-based battles don't really deliver the action we need. I just can't help but think about all these other RPG series that started off turn-based but have now evolved into so much more, even embracing the real-time or even semi-turn-based action combat. And with Pokemon Legends being sort of a spin-off, like I don't exactly know if this is part of the core series or not, but it has a completely different branding with the Legends subtitle, so I feel it could have been a good chance for them to try something different. And fans probably wouldn't have complained, since we still have the Diamond and Pearl remakes with the core gameplay. At the end of the day, it's Pokemon, and if they want to stick to the turn-based battles they've always been known for, then there's not really much point in comparing it to something like Monster Hunter, which was never really turn-based to begin with. Something I do hope they learn from that series though, is the way the monsters actually interact with each other feels very natural and lifelike, and that's something I feel Pokemon Legends is severely lacking. Again, it could be because it's early gameplay, but the world just feels so empty, so lifeless when we're talking about Pokemon. I want to see Luxray chasing down little Deerling in the prairies, Braviary soaring down from the sky to pluck a Remoraid out of the lake, or Rhyhorn chucking giant rocks at the player and... You get the point. Although many people have asked for a Breath of the Wild-like Pokemon game, I feel Game Freak might have taken it a bit too literally when trying to recreate the vastness you feel in open-world Hyrule. It honestly looks like there's less Pokemon running around here than there were creatures in Breath of the Wild. Pokemon Legends is such a great concept with so much potential, and I can't help but feel that it's not living up to it. 
I can only hope that with time, Game Freak will help this world evolve like the creatures that live in it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what you think of this discussion and whether Game Freak should have actually went with a real-time action-based combat system or if you actually like the fact they're sticking with you know, their roots in turn-based combat. I actually did a whole podcast recently with my long-lost brother discussing the current state of Pokemon, and it's really interesting because he actually doesn't like Pokemon games all that much, so he definitely has a very different perspective and opinions on the series than I do, so definitely recommend checking it out. And if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button down below. Subscribe if you haven't yet. There will be more videos covering Diamond and Pearl remakes and Pokemon Legends, but they're going to be more like top 10s and things that I'd like to see in the games until we get more trailers eventually. So until then, thanks for watching again, and I will catch you in the next one.